Welcome to another Stuart the Pilot video helping you learn fast about flying and today we are talking about the PPL ground school exams, how you can learn fast and pass them all first time. But before we get started, I just want to say thank you to all you beautiful people for showing me some love and subscribing to this channel. All the comments and all the likes you guys give me really keeps me motivated to make more and more stuff for you guys. When I first started the channel, I wasn't sure how these videos were going to go down, so I didn't buy tons of video gear to start with. But I always said if I ever hit 500 subscribers, I would get myself a new microphone, which now sits there, to up the quality of these videos. So massive thank you for all that, and if you do enjoy these videos and you want to see more stuff come out and the quality to keep improving. Make sure you hit subscribe, leave some comments, hit the like button, and you will help this channel get bigger and bigger. Anyway, onto the PPL ground school exams. Here in the UK, there are nine exams you will need to sit and pass before you can take your skills test. First one is aviation law or air law, and that is the main one you're gonna to wanna to get out of the way first because you need to pass this before you're allowed to fly solo in the UK. It's pretty much like your theory part of your driving test. You'll learn about basic rules of the skies, a bit of history about aviation. It's quite an interesting one, um, and then yeah, you need to pass that before you're allowed to do your first solo. So if you're looking to get one out of the way, start with that one. Next up is meteorology. You will learn all about the weather, basic weather fronts, and the main thing you'll actually uh, take out of it is learning to understand weather reports uh, so that if you're planning routes, you know exactly what the weather's gonna be on route. Next one is aircraft general knowledge. You'll learn everything technical about the airplane. Engines, oils, uh, carburetors, all that. It's actually really boring, but you need to learn it. Next up is navigation. You will learn all about the basic navigation techniques uh, flying in the UK without the use of a GPS. So you'll work out exactly how to get from A to B to C, taking into account the winds, what headings you need to fly, how long it's gonna take you. Um, really, really interesting one. Great one to do alongside your navigation part of your training as well. Number five, my favorite one, it was human performance and limitations. It's really, really interesting. You learn all about the psychological effects that you encounter as a pilot while you're flying. Very, very interesting one, and it's quite easy too. Number six, flight performance and planning. You will learn how to work out all the performance calculations with your aircraft. There's things like working out your maximum takeoff weight, fuel required, runway length, weight and balance, everything you're gonna to need to make sure that you are safe when you're flying. Number seven is the communications, the radio part, a really, really interesting one. All pilots wanna become super confident on the radio straight away. You will learn basics of the language of the skies and how that differs with, in terms of different services you get from ATC and different airspaces you fly into. Number eight is operational procedures. Very, very similar to air law in a lot of things. You kind of like your theory part of your you're flying, uh, it goes a bit more in depth into certain aerodrome procedures as well. And lastly, principles of flight, how and why aircraft fly. You're gonna know a lot of it already, but it's actually really interesting to learn the nuts and bolts of lift and drag and everything like that. So nine exam, it sounds like a lot. There is a lot of knowledge there to learn, but it's all really easy stuff. You learn a lot of the basics and it's not that tricky. All exams are multiple choice with a pass mark of 75%. When you sit that first exam, you then have 18 months in which you must sit and pass the rest of your eight exams. So you do your air law one first to get yourself so, and then as soon as you sit that first exam, you've then got 18 months to pass the rest. Once you sit and pass that last exam, all of those exams become one big bundle of joy that remain valid for 24 months, so two years. So effectively, once you pass that last exam, you have two years to sit and pass your skills test. So there's no point doing all the exams before you start your flying because I took three years for my training. So if I'd done all my exams first and then gone on to do my training, my exams would have expired after two years and then you just have to redo them all. So make sure you stagger them throughout your training. Don't start them all too fast. These exams also must be completed over six exam sessions. Now, one exam session is equal to 10 consecutive days. It's probably worth studying for a couple of exams at once. For example, air law and operational procedures go really well together. So when you sit that air law exam, get your ops out of the way as well. Just something to keep in mind when you're sitting those exams. A couple of tips that help me, I use the Pulley's Air Pilot's Manual books. Really, really good, really, really easy to, to learn. It's all written really well and they've got exercises at the end of every chapter. So what I did, I read each chapter and after each chapter, I had a look at the exercises, completed a few of them, didn't always write all down, didn't always like get a bit of pen and paper out and 
do the school stuff where you write everything down. Didn't do that all the time. Um, just if it was a particularly easy topic, just a quick glance, make sure I knew what I was doing and moved on. Do all that and then once you've done the book, buy the past papers as well. The past papers, you can get AFE ones or the Air Pilots Manual ones. I use the Air Pilots Manual ones, really, really good. And a lot of the questions that come up in the past papers are literally identical to the exams as well. So really, really worth investing in. I don't think it's that expensive. Once you have read the textbook, my advice is just sit one of the practice papers and you know what? You're probably gonna fail it. Don't worry about it. When you finish the paper and you mark them all, when you get an answer wrong, you go back and you learn everything there is to know about that topic because you can't just afford to learn the question. That question might not be the one that comes up. And also, if you're getting the question wrong, maybe you're just not knowledgeable enough about that topic. That's okay. Go back to the book, find the chapter and learn all about it. Also, because the exams are multiple choice, something you can sometimes forget is you can guess an answer and get it right. And then you'll sort of forget that mm, I wasn't actually that confident with that answer. But because you get it right, you forget about it. So make sure that if you're guessing an answer, put a wee asterisk next to it as you're guessing it so that you know when you're marking it, even if you get it right, you can look back and say, oh, well, I, I kind of flicked that. So I'll go back and, and make sure I read up on it all. Once you've done all the past papers, my advice is the night before the exam, do all the exams again, just in a one. One, two, three, four, five. I think there's five in each book of the Air Pilots Manuals ones. Do one after the other, one, two, three, four, five, and just make sure you're getting 100% in every single one. If you're not getting 100% in every one, you're not ready to sit the test yet. Make sure you know those past papers inside out because again, a lot of the questions will come up in the exam. Last tip, I never used any of the iPhone apps, but I believe there are some really good apps about, check them out. I know a friend of mine uses, uh, uses one of them and he said it's really really good so if you're struggling or you if you want to use them instead of the past papers i believe they're also really good this is just how i studied everyone's going to have their own way hopefully this video has helped you grasp a little bit about what to expect from the ground school exams any other questions drop them in the comments below don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you on the next video